Hey guys, Pete Ramsey here on behalf of Mr. Kelly McKay as we come together once again on today's podcast. And we're going to talk to you a little bit about HVAC business. Kelly, how you doing today, my brother? I'm doing good, man. How are you doing? Good, man. If you can't tell it. Today's sponsor good. is Max Air. Sent me a free hat. You <laughs> sent me a hat. We're going to put you on the air. We love our hats, don't we, Kelly? <laughs> there you go. <laughs> that's why that's my buddy up in uh he's, I think he's in Cleveland, right? Cleveland, Ohio. Uh or is he in Detroit? I have a hard time with that too, just so you know. Like remembering I, I where all my clients are located. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I really yeah. have a hard time. Well, his name is uh so, Max Nieves. Um, and he started yep. his business. Uh we started working together right when he opened up. He's doing so good. I'm so mm -hmm. proud of him. His online presence is phenomenal. His social media presence is phenomenal. He's gotten away from that camera shyness. He's getting in front of the camera. He's talking to customers and explaining all this stuff that he's doing. And he he's really doing well, really doing well. And he's he, he's like one of those kind of people that everybody loves. He's just so nice and so humble. Yeah. And, uh, and when we get him to smile, it's a big deal. Yeah, I remember Max. Honestly, you know, Max. he's one of those guys that I remember. Well, I remember him because I don't, I think he used to comment on my YouTube videos all the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. he was really it was either that, it was either that or he, he followed the podcast when I did the podcast with Gil. I can't remember on um, HVC Uncensored. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. but somehow, somehow I knew, I knew him just, yeah. just through the online and yeah, he was always nice and supportive. And so I always appreciated that, but I've, I actually saw a video of his because we're friends on Facebook, I think. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. And so, yeah, man, yeah. I love seeing that. I love seeing the guys just get, get on camera, just be yourself and just talk about what you're doing or what's happening in your business. And and that's um, it takes guts to do we, that. We and had so one today. I, I'm, believe me, any of you guys watching this who get on there and do that and have the have the courage to do it. I am applauding you. I know, and it, I'm it, just watching in awe because I just, I just, I love it. I it, absolutely it, love it. It's, it's a lot. It's a lot. You're, you're a lot better than you think you are because we hate hearing our voice and all that other stuff. Um, we've yep. had several people do this. The key is you need a really good audio uh, because the, one of the mistakes is you're way across from the camera and all this background noise is just really good out audio. So get you a good microphone, and they have these Bluetooth things that you put on here. And, uh, but if you, if you're just holding to yourself, you'll do well. So, um, um, Ryan over at, uh, Grove, he posted his first one today. He had hired an internal social media manager for, to, to as an intern to come in and take over his social media marketing. That is a smart yeah. man right there. That's how it's done. Am I wrong? Or yeah. wrong? Right. No, you're completely right. I think that, um, like so much of the marketing is driven from that online presence that if you can find somebody who's like, that's their major in college or something to yeah. come help you. If you're not in a position to be able to afford like a full-time salary, I mean, they could come work just a couple days a week. You can afford that. If you're doing, if you're priced right and you have a sales process and a service call process and a phone process and, and you, you got yourself put together there's no reason why you couldn't afford that to have somebody come in a couple of days a week and shoot some real, you know, cool footage and put together some really cool, um, you know, ads and just brand building and getting yourself out there and letting people get to know you too. You know, I'm all for that. Yeah. Pro tip, talk to the camera, explain the situation, the problem the customer had and how it was resolved. Don't say, hey, if you you know, call me if you want, they'll find you. The key is yeah. on your personal profile, make sure that your that, that your business is linked there. So they can when they find you, they can find your business. And believe me, educate, teach, take things that you and I see every day, like like we were talking about the algae coming out of the PVC drain line when you're blowing out, all that gunky stuff coming out. Do a close-up shot of that coming out. And post it and say, anybody guess what this is, right? And you just be surprised at how your world, things that you see every day and you just think everybody knows, people have never seen before in their life and you're going to blow their mind. And you start to put yourself out in the social groups in your area, wherever 
the Facebook members tend to congregate. Like, you know, uh, if, if I'm in, if I'm in, uh, I don't know, small town, Indiana. Well, like, um, yeah. Citizens of small town, Indiana. will have, a yeah, group. you know, like the hangout like that little town like, group. Yeah. Or you can create your own. Now we put a program together a couple of years ago and, um, I know Darren, you know, Darren o, uh, over in Virginia, uh, D and L, uh, he and his wife, uh, that he was in our class and we did this thing where you would create on Facebook, a group membership for homeowners in your area where homeowners can come together and get free advice from contractors. But the deal was the contractors were not allowed to spam. And so these members are coming in there and they're getting some free tips and everything else. And ultimately they're like, well, what do you charge? You know, how much you, and I learned that yeah. from Stephanie yeah. Postel, you know, Stephanie over at, they, they were at hero and now they're at anchor her and her husband. Um, I think you've mentioned her before, but I don't know them at all. Yeah. They, they've been very successful and they're really good people, but she would be on social media, husband and wife team, and he's out in the field and um, she's answering these questions and they just kept recommending and they just took off. But uh, really good people, really good people. Uh, I think they're in yeah. Savannah or Charleston. I always get those two confused. I think they're in Charleston or Savannah. I anyway. actually wrote about this. I'm super excited. That I'm fixing to finish a, a book and um, it's still going to be just a little bit before it comes out. But I talked about creating some value on social media and literally having some type of a plan, you know, um, I, when I went to California for a, a seminar or an event, or it was like recertification, I think that's what it was for. And they had a guest come on and speak and, and she was talking about how to, how to, you know, get yourself a put out there. And it's, it's really, you, you for one, it's consistency. You got to be consistent. Like you got to continue to show up. But um, another thing that they recommended was just having a schedule. Like, what are you? What are your topics going to be each day? And she had her topics, but I kind of came up with mine, and I'll share them with you real quick. Like, you could do like a Monday fun day, where you take a post a picture or a video of something that the fun that happened over the weekend with maybe you, your family, or your your pets, or somebody on your team with their you know written permission. Um, you, you should have a form, you know, to, that lets everybody sign off on that if they're okay with being put on film and, you know, for purposes of marketing and, and being released to the public with your, with your company. Um, Toolbox Tuesday, where you post a picture of or video of some tool, some unique tool that you use, and it could be anything. Um, and just explain how it increases the efficiency of what you guys do each day and how it helps you do your job and, and what it is and how you use it, of course. Winning Wednesday, post a picture or video um, of a happy client or a five-star review. Ask one of our, um, you could ask one of your customers to record a, a short clip, you know. Um, I love those. Like um, every time I see somebody get a customer on to be brave enough, <clears throat> excuse me, on film, you know, to say something really nice about the company, you just can't yeah. beat that. Yeah. Throw, throwback yeah. Thursday you know, a team member or you like, um, a video or a picture from the past and with a little short story attached to it. Like when it comes to like, um, newsletters and stuff like this, you're, you're building a relationship with your customer by sharing some of you. So you can't just, you can't be so reserved and not share things, you know, about your life. You don't have to like put everything out there. But you do got to share something and be yeah. be a little personal yeah. about it. People you know, like to do business opinion. with people and not not businesses. Yes, it and makes cool. you real. Become real. I was thinking and, Fridays. And, yep. Free filter Friday. Come by our showroom and pick up your free filter, and we'll show you some of the new IQ products or something like that. But what did you have for Friday? It totally work. <laughs> Friday fire. Friday fire. Friday fire. Post a picture or story showcasing a person place or thing it could be a local business a co-worker a customer a local landmark a holiday or event that's happening in your region that's probably better you bring so just awareness. some ideas you can name it whatever yeah. you want to name it you it. can post whatever you want to post the main thing is just to have if you can develop some type of a schedule then it will help you from not having to sit around and think about what are we going to post today you would just have yeah. an idea to steer you in the right direction so what you've done 
it, this is a good segue. Um, we actually had um, somebody ask for us to speak about this topic, and it's called skill stacking. Uh, and I've taken this phrase from from a uh, a comment on one of the one of the videos, one of the viewers, one of you guys, um, and it was really it was really well thought. What skills can you be acquiring and stacking that they synergize and they create um, better success as a result? And by for starting with an education that Kelly just gave us on you know, a, a structure to posting with actual topics and then internalizing that or actually implementing that so that you actually get the skill set and you start to get good at it, right? And and actually implementing, now you have a skill set that is stacked, totally unrelated from heating and air, unrelated from advertising, although, well, uh, it, it's, it's, it's different from advertising because it's more of an organic marketing. But now we've stacked two different skill sets and together they've propelled you forward and in, in, in be more successful as a business owner. And so I wanted to segue into that because somebody asked us to, and you know, we don't have to speak the whole uh, hour yeah. about this, but I would love to get yeah. some feedback from Mr. McKay on what skills has he been stacking into his business, maybe recently or maybe years ago that you felt like, wow, because of that, it made a difference in my business, you know, beyond the obvious technical skill set. What say you, Mr. McKay? Well, I think, you know, one of the best things that I did, um, once I got to a certain point, you know, if you're, I guess like if you're in the, if you're in the field and you're just not like, you just want to get better at being in the field or creating a better customer experience or doing your job better then that might be just a hair different than if you're in like a management or leadership position. If you're in a management or leadership position, you know, for the last many, many years, that's what I was, what I was in. And so for me, believe it or not, like starting YouTube channel was really good for me. Yes. Just because I got used to talking. I got used to sharing my ideas. And you go back and watch that first okay, video. We got to go back and watch your first video you know, and see how far along you've came. <laughs> I can't wait. Oh, yeah. Uh, it's a long way. So, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll dig up the archives. But just, just, <laughs> just being okay with um, being able to share your share your ideas and, and not worry about what somebody might think yeah. about it. Cause yeah. not everyone's going to agree, agree with you. But that's, I feel like that's a skill to be yeah. able to shed that stuff off of you and not worry about it and just keep doing you and and being authentic being yourself yeah so i believe that that was a big one um there there's a lot more so let's let's just kind of maybe trade back and forth like what do you think pete like when you when you started hiring people and you know yeah. what or or even as a tech like what was the main skill that you developed that you felt really helped propel your career gave you more confidence to be to do something bigger well one of the one of the big skill sets was uh, uh, business training um, and learning how to transition from being effective at, at coming out, addressing a service issue, resolving that, and, and, and move on to the next one. This is what we do. But it wasn't until, you know, I, I name drop Ron Smith all the time because he was my first trainer. He was the first one that, you know, HVAC spells with Ron, Ron Smith. He, at that time, had taken his training program on the road and he would come into the city where we were and teach a handful of uh, business owners his program. And the skill set of the customer experience was born for us. And I'm telling you, this was alien to everybody. We were the very yeah. first ones to ever put shoe covers on. Nobody had heard of that before. And I know that I'm old and everything else, but it wasn't that long ago, guys. And the doing these things so that the customer was actually better off and not just the equipment. And so that became a skill set. And so we started to create processes. And so we had a flow chart and you know, we do this, we do that, we do that, and we would train our team. And, and as a result, 
we started, we really started uh, leading our entire market by far. Um, but with that, yeah, but process processes is not like a skill set. Maybe the development of processes or implementing the process, but like, what was the what was the skill that you the skill so, so that the, you got the, and you the, used? Not a tactic or a strategy, like a skill where it just something changed and you showed up differently. So, yeah, potato. Uh, you know, I I don't see that exactly the same as you because this was a skill yeah. that we didn't have. And it wasn't until we learned it and implemented it that we developed that. And then part of that, I'll give you, uh, I'll give you a different one. How is this? Part yeah. of what he asked us to do, for example, was to yeah. have um, leadership meetings once a week in which we would train, which we would review uh, invoices with the technicians. And we would... Yeah. Um, we we would just basically create a culture leadership the, leadership meetings to develop skills. That's what yes. it sounds like to me. Yes. Yeah. And so at first that was awkward, but it because of my personality, you know how you you, you tend to acclimate easily towards certain things. That was my Tuesday was my favorite day of the week. It was training day, and so I'd get all my team in, and we all this stuff that I would learn. I would come out and get out the grease board and I would illustrate, you know, I, I've watched you do this several times on you, your YouTube channel. You're great yeah. at it and teach, you know, they would have trouble. They would have these, these, these limitations in like taking a flat book price of a repair and this, this big number, you know, three, four, five, six hundred dollars for this thing that they know costs X amount of dollars in the parts house. And there was that disconnect because they were, consumers they weren't business owners my employees were consumers and they had that so they had that that mental block and to go on the board and to break down everything and to watch their eyes open and watch that Stephen Covey paradigm shift what's that mental shift in that aha moment that was it I was I was hooked I was addicted so that that definitely was a skill set that was very helpful in um so I'm going to say that this actual skill set there, not that you didn't implement that, but I'm going to say that you were able to take this concept, whether they showed you how to do this or not, and you were able to teach that in a way that made sense to your team. Yeah, that, I think I had a natural thing. So for like that. compared to something or, you know what I'm saying, yeah. as far as like, the skill, yeah, or yeah. it could have just been that you weren't used to having meetings and getting up and talking in front of a whiteboard and you develop that skill to be That's able to a good do that. Point. When I was in the eighth grade doing that book report, terrified, you know, I read the book and rubbing my, they said, I, I, you know, I'm rubbing my thigh because I'm nervous, right? Yeah. They, they, well, I thought I was going to, you're going to wear a hole in your pants, you know, just terrified to going in the army where it was required. You had to stand up and do a five minute block of instructions on said topic. And so we'd stand there and I was really nervous and then eventually became more and more frequently. I got I got active in in my my little local church way back when. And so I had to teach a few things. And before you know it, um, by the time you know I had my business and, and teaching my team and then going to Linux and teaching entire sales training, you know, I can stand up in front of the biggest group. I know you you and I were talking about this off camera a, a long time ago. Uh, I'm very comfortable in front of a large group of people in teaching something, but I came from a place where I was terrified. I was very shy. That's and a skill. Just, That's skill development. So yeah. I'm not trying to beat you up on this stuff, but I don't want to sit here and just say, well, we start, you know, do processes, learn your numbers, run, you know, um, do like that's, that's all good and dandy, but like, a real tangible, like, what should I focus on if I want to increase my skill set? That's a great one. Being able to stand in front of your team and talk without a shaky voice. And like, it, you may be shaky in the beginning. Like, you may be scared. You may be, um, and and um, we would do this with our team and certain team members. Oh, boy. You talk about getting uncomfortable. It made them incredibly uncomfortable. Yeah. And they we would search too. for the words. They couldn't find the words because they were so nervous. They hated role playing. And um, 
<laughs> yes, that too. Well, I was going to say that right there too. That was back to you. My, Your turn. Next one. Your turn. Go ahead. Okay, my turn. So, as far as like skill sets and developing skill sets, role playing, hundred percent role playing. Get to the point where it, it does not bother you to role play in front of anybody. It doesn't bother you to role play with your spouse, doesn't or, or whoever it else is in your house who's willing to sit down and let you practice. Like if you can get to the point where that doesn't bother you and you stopped acting, you know, um, once you get used to it, like it almost bothers you when other people are so like weird about role playing because it's nothing. It's literally nothing, but I get it. It's a skill that once you develop it, it's, it's a lot easier, but you're not going to develop it if you don't get used to it. And if you can't get to the point where you can successfully role play something with somebody, then how are you going to expect to do it? And I hear guys say it all the time, and I don't believe it for a second. I believe you will get a lot better if you get to the point where you can role play um, with somebody you know. Even though people, the, guy, the guys will say, well, I can do it great with some. No, get really good with somebody you know. Then you'll be unbelievable when you're with somebody you don't know. I agree. I agree. Did, did you so have I'm a huge proponent of role playing. That? Did somebody to teach, teach you that? Or... Play? Go ahead. Sorry. Um, it was probably just my digging into learning. Um, I, I'm talking about in order to develop the skill of whether it be sales, kitchen, kitchen counter sales. Yeah. Or just having conversations with people like role playing will do that for yeah. you. It will help you just come better. Well, no, the reason and I so, asked that Kelly is I, yeah. my first sales training was by the act group. I think they're still in business and it was called, yeah. it was, it was boot camp. It was sales boot camp. and Steve Howard. Um, I don't even know. You know, he's, he, I haven't heard from him in years. I don't even know if he's still around, but um, we, when you go into the training, we went through all this stuff and you had to role play and I'd never done that. Before. Yeah. And when you're role playing with your peers, people who you're kind of, you man, it's, it's really unnerving. Right. And I think that's, that, that may right. be what you're talking about, but when you can role play to your point with people of your, your, your peers, or even your boss who knows better than you do that and you go over yeah. that to your point that you got it now. The strangers yeah. are easy. Yeah. So repetition is the mother of skill. You've got to do the reps, just put the reps in, but okay. that's been, that was a key, a key thing for, for me. So as far as like developing the skill to be able to sit down and actually you know, um, learn for one, sit down and learn like what I do to learn certain things is I, I create acronyms. If I can create an acronym then I can remember it. Gotcha. So like, um, we had like, you know, DAP, my job here today is to design the perfect system for you to your, for you and your family to answer all your questions and to get the price right. You know, and this is some well and long training that I, I either watched on YouTube or, um, but I would create acronyms for it. Um, so that's, that's something that I've learned for myself that just helps me remember stuff. But, but uh, yeah, role playing, speaking in front of a, your team, you know, even if you just start with like two team members and then you graduate and do like five team members. And then you graduate and you speak to 10 team members or whatever, depending on how big a company you work at and just getting, getting, being able to stand in front of a room and be okay with just talking or, or training without, you know, yeah. Yeah. Just, it's a highly effective skill. Speaking is like one of the top paid skills. Sure. I, I've got so, one. So okay, your turn. When, thanks. When 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 I joined the <laughs> army, when I joined the army, um, my roommate had bought a a, a, a Pentax K one thousand, a thirty five millimeter <laughs> camera, and he was into photography and everything else. And so I went and bought one, right? Because I was in the army, I was making a little bit of money, and I ended up taking a photography class. And then I ended up learning how to develop my own film. And then I, I could actually print my own prints, both black and white. And, and, and I would learn how to, you know, burn in certain uh, uh, highlights and, you know, just manipulate the uh, image so I could have a, a clear um, 
uh, image. And then I started getting into color imagery and then format cameras. And then I would bring my little girls in and take pictures. And um, you learn things like the rule of thirds and then how to how to fill your frame properly or how to frame your your your, your image. And so all these different things. And I, I got pretty good at, at taking cameras. And I was actually the unit photographer when I was stationed in Germany back in the 80s. And so uh, the guys were all in formation and their detention and I'm running around taking pictures of it. And they get, you know, and it was, it was kind of an inside joke because all my buddies are looking at me like, you know, you, you, know, you jerk, whatever, but um, yeah, got really good at it. So when it came time to post my own social media and to take my own images and create my own ads, I can make a professional looking image because I know how to put the balance totally unrelated yeah. all of a sudden in business. But it, it raises the, the the tide of my marketing and all of the boats in there are, are raised as a result. So photography. Yeah. Good one. Well, with today's um, social media scene, even if I was a technician, I would be making bank, making technician videos. I could easily like swap my entire channel and just go make tech videos, but it just doesn't interest me. Yeah. Um, and I would, my channel would do a lot better because there's a lot more technicians than there are um, owners. But we'll do it so, yourself. Um, but there if too. I was doing that, um, and it's also a skill set that if you do end up becoming an owner someday or you're an owner right now, is at least learning some type of a program on your phone. There's so many to pick from. I use um, Kinemaster or Kindmaster, K I N E M A S T E R. What like do you I use pay that for? something. I pay like 40 or 60 bucks a year for it or something, but what, it's a really good app. What does it's it really do? easy to use for, for editing video. Okay. Okay. And I use InShot. And, and you know, creating slideshows for, for pictures and you can add okay. music to it and all that stuff. So it, it you could use pictures for it, but learning how to do that. It's very simple. It just takes a little bit of time and yeah. but it's, it's a skill set that I used in my business all the time. So there's a free app. Um, I use, I we use had In promotions. There's free apps. I use InShot. Canva has a free account. I've, I've been using that a lot, but I bought the pro cause it was but like the paid account. Yeah. 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 It was like nothing per year. I mean, it was like uh, less than a hundred bucks. Um, did the whole year and it has all this stuff. Uh, but yeah, Video editing is another one that I had, I, I bought the software back, uh, gosh, who, who, um, Camtasia. I bought Camtasia and that's the one I use. I, I, I have Camtasia. It. Yeah. Yeah. And, and so I went from, I didn't know any better. I'm trying to, I created the images and then I'm trying to narrate to the speed of the images and I had to yeah. learn backwards, right? And then I learned, okay, you don't do that. You narrate first your audio, right? Edit that. I used a program called uh, Audacity, and you could you could you know play with the sound and make it you know richer, deeper voice. And then once you have your audio, you set everything up to images. I didn't know that, you know. I, I, I didn't learn that skill. Yeah, I don't know this. I haven't learned. I haven't learned that much um, with the on with the with those programs, but with the one with my phone, I'm pretty good at it. And yeah, that doesn't yeah, yeah. take me long to edit like a video. Yeah. Cause I just gotten so good yeah. at it. Cause I've, that's where I've recorded most of my videos just for, just because it's so much faster and easier for me sure. than shooting with my yeah. nice camera and, and doing, you know, the Camtasia videos, if I edit them there and I used Adobe for a while too. Um, I, they're not well, Adobe. That's, um, that's the big time. Is it Adobe? Yeah. yeah. That's the big time. Yes. I use that and it, it's comp it's way more complicated than camtasia yeah that's why I didn't but, mess but with anyhow it. um camtasia is still very high tech and can do a lot of stuff so yeah um but anyhow what what other it, skill... it's strictly a time thing yeah. i was transitioning what, what other skill comes like, to mind yeah. for you personally that that stacked in to help you out your success uh i'm sorry yeah there's a little delay today for some reason we're talking on top of each other I apologize no, no big deal. Um, you know, um, I think 
writing to some degree. I know that seems weird and off, but I still think that there's, you know, I, I, I believe that there's more value, you know, nowadays you have autocorrect and you have all these things to help you, you know, just write an invoice. Cause most of you have digital invoicing. If you don't, you should be having digital, like you should make the transition like now. Um, but back then, like my writing was always nice. You you know, my, just my penmanship. Um, and I believe that it built a lot more value in my invoices. And I wrote everything that I did on every single call. So that was something, I don't know if it's a skill, but, you know, um, I do know that we had people who came on the team who couldn't spell worth a lick, you know, they, and just because it just wasn't natural for them. Spelling just always came natural to me for some reason, but those invoices just weren't professional. And so I feel like you're just lacking that professionalism, you know, for your company, for your business and the way you show up if you, if you're a horrible speller. So if you, if you're a horrible speller and you're typing things, just make sure you always like spell check everything before you send it. Um, Cause somebody who does know how to spell is going to catch that. And I call me crazy. I just feel like, um, like it, it bugs me. It's a very, yeah. when, when I see things misspelled, yeah. um, I saw an ad just the other day for like a, a morning routine. And it was an ad that I seen multiple times and it said mooring routine. Yeah. It was missing the end. And that drives me crazy. Like it, yeah. it like makes me mad. I'm like, you built this ad and you want you, the public to see this and you can't spell morning. Like your whole program is about the morning. So like, that's one of the things that's like a pet peeve of mine, but anyhow, um, well, I'm trying to think of, of another skill that was a lot of times like effective. related. One of the things that, that, that I did, um, when I was in yeah. business is I took the single page manual J, um, that I think train had that out train American standard had it. It was like a single page and I could, I could do a manual load calculation where I'd actually measure the windows. And, and so I went through this so many times that my ability to move through the software was just another level, you know, because, because I, I, I've been through all, all of the details and that kind of correlated over yeah. into my manual D when I could duck size, I could just look at a duck system and see stuff because to your point, you 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 practice, 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 and you 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 go through all these different scenarios. The first time you don't know, you know. Then the second time, third time, you start to remember, and uh, you know after after you know thirty, forty times, you you just you move through this stuff, yeah, you know, really quickly. And so that that was it was a related skill set, but. To this day, I mean, a lot of those things have just stayed with me years after I've left the field. But um, just thinking about unrelated yeah. skills as well, because we, we all have them. I know I studied psychology that really helped me on uh, being a better uh, leader, on being a better consultant for for my customers, um, you know, better sales, if you will. Uh, well, and, understanding your own. Yeah, yeah own, that's a good maybe one. Maybe like your thought pr process, but like your own, um, what's limiting the word? Beliefs. Like, um, yeah, limiting beliefs, like questioning, like, um, internal dialogue. Where did that belief come from? Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. We all um, have it. Psychology is huge. Like, if there's one thing that I, I I really enjoy, I'm the same as P. I really enjoy studying psychology because it's it's just fascinating to me. It is, and it really can make a huge difference in how you interact with people and how you're able to. Um, something that I've always been really good at is just like I can get along with anybody. Like I, I'm just so if that's if you're always finding somebody in your team that you just freaking hate and you can't stand, then it's probably, you know, and they're really, maybe they haven't really necessarily done anything to you or like, I could just get along with anybody. I don't, it doesn't mean that once I got to know them at a deeper level that maybe I didn't have, you know, a chip on my shoulder about something about them or something, but 
having the ability to just get along with people and just be able to talk to anybody is a skill. I got one for um, you. Being able to show empathy towards yeah. other people is a skill. Yes. Believe it or not, it's a skill. Some people cannot do it. Yeah. And so pass. <laughs> these are all high level skills in my, in my book um, that seem just like, because some of them, you know, if it's not a natural thing for you, it takes intention and the repetition of the intention to do, to use it, to pay attention, to become aware. That's, that's where the skill is, is to be able to, you know, just listening is a skill it that is. most people don't do. I'm working on that one all the time. So what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. We've all heard that. Mm. Our business uh, brings stress. It brings all these things happening at once and your ability to juggle these things. Sometimes mm -hmm. it can be pretty frustrating. And one of the qualities of an entrepreneur, and um, I heard this from Dennis Hoban the other day on one of our mastermind groups, he called it emotional stamina and a good business owner entrepreneur is going to have to deal with, with the ups and downs of emotion. Cause just when this gets going, yes. you got a problem over there. And that is a, that is a skill that if you develop, it is, it's almost a quality, but that only comes through what doesn't kill you. Right. Is, is learning to adapt, right. Let it go. Don't get all wrapped up in this stuff. Be able to, to have that stamina to be an entrepreneur. It's not for everybody, but you, you're no. not out the gate having full possession of it. You got to, you got to build this thing. That is a very important 100%. skill. 100%. Yeah. 100%. You, you've, it's, it's something that, you know, what used to like rattle you to your core after five, six, seven years in business, it doesn't rattle you anymore because you, it takes a lot more to rattle you than something small that used to rattle you and, you know, um, just just really mess up your whole day <laughs> to, for a lack of a better way to put it. But um, yeah, it, it, it's something you build. It is resilience grit whatever you want to call it it's you build it so you know it's kind of funny a lot of times all, we look all, at we look at people like they're just naturally this way but are they you know you weren't born the leader that you are today yeah. i'm not no. darn sure what not you know if you can mess it up pete messed it up that's that's why i'm here you know that's that's why i, I was like the shy little kid that didn't talk to anybody like I did you? not talk to hardly anybody. I just shy as could be and bashful and, and yeah. um, this, this industry was really good for me because it really made me talk. Yeah. I had to talk to people. Yeah, I had to. Um, and so it was really nerve wracking and I look like a baby. So like, um, I may not look like a baby now, but it's cause I'm getting older. But when I was, sure. you know, had been doing this for 10 years, I still look like a, like, a friggin' 17 year old or baby 16 face, yeah. year old. Yeah. Yeah. Baby face. So I got beat up all the time by usually primarily women. How long you been doing this? And they would say it in that tone, you know, and I would, I would, but I got so good with people that I just got to the point where I just, you. you know, well, this is my, this is my 10th year. Yeah. I just didn't affect me anymore. Yeah. And then I loved, I actually loved it because it got me a chance to like, prove to them just how freaking brilliant I am and how good I am at what I do. Cause this is what I do every day. And so I would find what was wrong and I would throw all this terminology at them. And by the time I got done said, you know, well, what would you like us, what would you like us to do? You know, do you want to go ahead and move forward with this prepare or whatever, whatever conversations I was having, it just flabbergasted them. Cause I just couldn't believe that this young little 15 year old, <laughs> knows what he's talking about, even though I was 27 or 28 at the time, you know? So it's, uh, it, it was, it's, it was really good for me. Just the, just the industry being able to get out and just talk to people. So talking to people, such a skill, it's a skill that's lacking more and more and more. Yeah. So, um, being, I know it sounds crazy, not just talking with your buddies, 
but actually talking to a stranger and just having conversations. It's yeah. If you hate becoming more and more rare, if you hate parties, (laughs) you're just over in the corner talking to one person, you know, that's a, that's a hard thing. I used to, I used to do this thing where when, whenever I was out driving around, um, like with, when I was a territory manager, I, I was rural. So I had a lot of road time and I would practice engaging total strangers just to see what happened. Didn't matter. I wasn't going to see them again. So I'm at a gas station. I mean, I'm not going to walk up to, you know, another customer, but the employees there, they're stuck. You got to, they got to talk to you anyway. So I would do this thing. And I, uh, I told this story to somebody, if I'm repeating myself, I apologize. So this one lady comes in, she clearly, she has contact lenses on. And, um, I said, is that your natural eye color? She says, no, they're contacts. I said, well, they're working for you. Nice job, you know, whatever. And then, you know, I'm laughing. Yeah. I go in and I, I take my refill coffee mug because I'm filling up on the on, on the gas tank and I, f- I fill it up and I set it down to pay for it. She's, no, that's on the house. <laughs> and so yeah. I would go <laughs> to the convenience stores and it was guy or girl, whatever. If it's a guy, you know, I'm going to talk guy stuff, whatever. But but I'm engaging everybody. Right. Just it was like a competition to see how much free coffee I could get because that was my vice, and you know it didn't always work, but it, it it was amazing. Or what we call the gatekeeper, and you know when I would go to your dealership, right? There's there's somebody up front. It was usually a lady, and she she was usually a very powerful person in a role that people assume that she's not very important, you know, powerful. But she's got the ear of the owner. Could be the wife, could be the sister, could be just a, a long-term uh, employee. And I began yeah. engaging that person and treating like a human being. My sales went up. Yeah. You need to call Pete. You know, he's he he comes in here and he works so and you know, it it's weird, you know, how how this stuff uh uh yeah, you know, is it turns into other things. Um that was not an easy skill. It is it is that was not it easy. That was not one easy. Of, one of yeah, no. No. It wasn't for me either. So I t- completely understand that. But but the what you just did is like the law of reciprocation. Like it's a it's an that's influence, true. you know, influence and persuasion. Like that's a skill. Um that can always be continuing to be developed. But there's certain things like reciprocation that um have worked for I mean hundreds of hundred you know, thousands of years. You know, as far as like, um, wait, if I give you something, it's just like human nature. You're going to feel compelled to give me something back to, to reciprocate. So, um, but I I wanted to add this one before I forget is because this was a huge skill for me, not only in my career, um, but in literally everything. And it is, it is a skill because we are, you know, we're emotional beings and we tend to make emotional decisions. Um, but if you can, if you can deliberately delay gratification, whatever it is, you want to buy something deliberately, even if you have the money, just don't do it. Wait a week, wait two weeks. If it's something that you don't have to have, and don't try to convince yourself that you have to have it. If you know darn good and well, you don't need it. Like you can live perfectly fine without it. But being able to delay gratification allowed us to stop living paycheck to paycheck. It allowed me to have patience when it came to like building a team. It allowed me to have, you know, patience with um, with um, the training, you know, by training people. Like you can't, we want it all tomorrow, you know, or we want it all yesterday. Like we want, we see other companies winning um, or, or your, your coworkers winning who have put in the reps that you haven't put in yet. And you want the same pay as them, or you want the same benefits as them and you don't deserve them yet. Because you haven't put in the reps, you haven't put in the work, the 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 years, and you get to gain the experience to get better. Um, but delayed gratification, that's that that's honestly one of the things that's completely changed my life because otherwise we just live paycheck to paycheck. We 
we did, that's all I knew for 37 years of my life. That's a good one. And when it finally got too, too painful, then I drew the line in and I said, I'm just not going to live this way anymore. And it is a disciplined skill. And people don't look at it as a skill, but it is. But uh, if you can develop that, I mean, I can tell you, it will change your financial future, your financial destiny. Yeah. A lot of good things come from delayed gratification. So um, you stop, you stop, um, you know, wanting things that you just don't need too. So. Yeah. There's still some things. Don't get yeah. me wrong. It's on the values list. We all have something that we'll spend stupid money on. So everybody has a vice of some kind. Yeah, well, yeah, of course. So you still have to be really careful about that that vice that is your one thing that you spend a lot of money on. You got to still you got to be careful. Delay some grat, you know, delay the gratification. Yeah, sometimes a skill you've developed in life just naturally falls in your lap and it complements what you're doing. And that that's happened in my case a lot. My background in marketing, you know, my 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 grandfather's a commercial artist freehand. My dad, you know, he on the we we worked directly for the marketing agency. And I was a little boy, eight, nine years old, working in the print shop, you know, and that, you know, grandpa teaching me a hand letter. So, you know, he, he taught me these rules of, 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 of how to do a lot of this stuff. So that, that was kind of cool. That was what I was supposed to have done, but um, you know, the photography, I mentioned that um, all the video stuff that I ended up doing now, social media just makes it that much easier. And by the way, I, you know, if I took my time, I could really probably do some professional stuff. But it, when you're doing, when you're a one man operation guy, yeah. sometimes it's better just to put that, put yourself out there and just keep moving. So uh, I do that a lot of, yeah. but sometimes it's kind of like what Kelly just mentioned, where first of all, you capture the insight. It could come from a book. It could come from, you know, a podcast like Kelly telling you, you need to, you need to start delaying your gratification. But once that becomes an insight, then you have to actually implement it once and you've done that. So once you've implemented once it, it, you have to turn this thing into a habit, right? And then once that habit is mastered, now it becomes a skill. And so there are so many skills that you can develop. And I, I remember somebody talking about delayed gratification to the extent you can delay gratification it's directly proportional to the size of the reward at the end. So that could be in terms of. Oh, of I believe that's good. Right. It's a, a exercise. It could be a financials could be a host of things. Um, but I love what you yeah. said about transitioning into living from paycheck to paycheck and into being able to save money and invest in things of this nature, the skill set, the financial skill set that you need to run your business is based hugely on what Kelly just shared, but also taking the accounting classes, understanding that I was terrible at that. I lost a lot of money, but learning, you know, I teach that now, but learning how to actually come in and really understand your numbers and do it in a way that, that you, you get it, a light bulb comes on. And then coupled with what Kelly is saying, you know, you, you turn that habit into a skill and now you're cooking with Crisco. Awesome stuff, man. Skill stacking. I got to figure out who it was that, so I can get him a shout out. If you got another one, that was, uh, he didn't sign it. Mohi Bacquardi 4053. I'm sorry, my brother. I know <laughs> her sister. I probably butched that up, but it was a couple of weeks ago uh, on one of the, the uh, oh, it was on the last, yeah. last episode. But, we appreciate uh, it anyhow. So yeah. and that's a good subject. You know what there, there are um, my main thing with skills is just to be able to recognize that you're brilliant, you know, at something. And that is a skill, even if it was nat a natural born talent, it's a skill that you have. Um, everybody has something. And but recognizing that you're probably good at a lot of other things too. Um, and recognizing those as skills because they people just think like, Oh, Pete's a natural born leader. Obviously Pete doesn't, it doesn't bother Pete to get up and talk in front of a, he, he's just, that's just Pete. 
no, Pete didn't start out that way. Exactly. I'm not saying that it's impossible that somebody um, couldn't, didn't start out that way. Some people do. I'm not saying that, Um, but I'm saying more times than not, it was a skill that was developed. So, um, you know, being, being able to get along with people um, regardless of the different personalities, that's something that um, I don't know what you would call that, but it is a skill set. And it's something that if you're going to be in management, you have to have, you can't just, you know, not, not like this guy or that gal, just because, you know, they like green beans and you hate green beans. You know, you've got to be able to accept other people's differences and, um, you know, the way they interpret things and what, how they learn just because you're, you, you might, you might learn very well through video well, they may not learn that well through video. They may learn through actually reading something, you know? So everybody's just different and just being able to adapt to everybody and, and uh, to get along. I feel like that's a super underrated skill. Like um, there's so many um, times where we would hire somebody new and, and um you know, somebody on the team who was not, who did not have this skill, did not possess this skill was caught, con- you know, right away. Oh, this person is not going to work. They're not going to work. You know, they just can't, they're not catching on fast enough. This is ridiculous. Well, you're not even giving them a chance. Like they've been here three days, you know, and this is completely new to them quite possibly if they're new to the industry. So just, just, um, and that's maybe a little bit different than what I'm saying, but it's not so much. Well, it's not so we much. We have to do is because the people of- that they get along with and they like, they don't say that about. So yeah, because you know, birds of a feather, right? We all flock together. Yes, yes. But when you when you leave that element, I, I, we learned this in the army because here we were kids, um, thrown in together from all parts of the country, different accents, different races, um, different different social yeah. levels, different financial backgrounds, and you quickly learn to, to integrate and to, to, you know, accept people for who they are in that case, as a soldier, as a, as a partner, as a, as a peer. And, um, you know, that we've seen racism, you know, really prominent in the last, you know, particularly the last, last, um, uh, decade or two, but it stemmed back from, from, you know, genuine difficult times, but having that benefit, like, you know, I don't know if this is a skill or not, but have been exposed to that at such a young age, you know, I played sports, you know, we, we, you know, we were just all in there together. We really didn't think about that kind of stuff. We just, you know, it, in, in all of a sudden when I'm thrown into a situation, you know, I mean, I'm, doesn't matter who I'm dealing with. I'm extremely comfortable with him because I see him as a human being, not as this outward face with this, uh, predisposal to a certain, uh, uh, facial, you know, like a sourpuss facial expression or something, you know what I'm saying? And, and, yeah. and look behind that and see a person because in every rock face customer who that they've learned to, to, to put a block up is a, is a scared younger version because they know that you know more about what they're having to get involved in than they do, because that's why they called you. Right. And so, you know, I'm not going to pay that. I'm going to let you know right now, you know, they're, they're wanting to assert their, 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 their position. Cause you're, you're in their territory, but the, the ability to look past all of that, look past the race, look past the, the accent or what, whatever, and look at the human being and, and, and the, that that's a skill set. That's a skill set. And, uh, yeah. t- in today's world, it's, it's, uh, it's not as, con- well, I think, I think the younger generation is a lot better than that than we were because we faced a lot of different challenges, but I uh, don't know where that came from. Yeah. And I, I thought my main thing is, yeah. And I don't know, you know, I don't, I don't have a bunch of specific situations to talk to about that. I just, as far as like being a leader of any kind, like you're going to have to deal with multiple personalities and you're going to have to deal with uh, multiple backgrounds and, and, um, oftentimes, um, there's something that's called attributional error. So if you don't see eye to eye with somebody about some particular subject or something, find something uh, human nature 
human nature wants us to um we want to we want to find uh, why that is and we want to pinpoint it so like um what happens is you wind up assuming that oh well they just don't want to do this job because i'm just giving like some weird example like let's yeah. say you know you're seeing them through your filters not not through yes theirs. yes because yeah. you're not you're not realizing that could be a belief or a way they were raised or yeah. something out completely outside of you and the organization of where that's coming from. But we tend to attribute it to something to have to do with ourselves or, or something closer and chances are you're completely wrong. So like being, yeah. you know, judging those types of things, you just have to kind of throw that out the door and it's yeah. really hard. Yeah. But I made those mistakes several times and, but, you know, but you, you know, just, you live and you learn, but you know, Kelly, life in of itself is a journey of, of, of growth. And it doesn't matter if you're in business for yeah. yourself or, or you're an employee or you're, you're a hobo just trying to get by on the corner. Um, yeah. you, 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 life's tough. And so we're, we're, we constantly have this, these external, um, irritants or, um, resistance to life. And so, moving forward and overcoming that is just part of life. And, so, and, and the more resistance, the more growth, the more growth, the more strength, and, the, and then the greater the next challenge. And so we're all growing. So whatever path you choose, just proactively grow and go go out and develop these skills. And it, you know, you got to reach out to people who've been there, trust that their advice, it should make sense, is is good. And then, and then start to implement and test it for yourself and don't give up too soon, you know, and, um, right, develop all these skills, right. but the fundamentals, obviously you have to have a skill to know what you're doing at your craft. Obviously you're going to have to learn the basic bills, uh, business skills, basic marketing and definitely basic financials. But on that, we get into the leadership. You start going to these next levels and, 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 and like Kelly said, taking, taking control of yourself, your own inner, inner dialogue, your own self-limiting beliefs and your own, you know, um, uh, propensity propensity to to judge others through you know your 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 yep. perceptions in life and all these other your things filters and, like you said your yeah. filters and uh, or, or lenses and um, depending on how you know your, your your descriptive model there but ultimately grow 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 challenge yourself and if you're not growing you're not you know you're not living so um just keep pushing we yeah. have covered the first hour i think so we should be about an hour. So um, this is a good, really close to good hour, point yeah. to wind down and uh, let Mr. McKay uh, close out with prayer or with a final thought, rather. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, yeah. So when it comes to, um, you know, I'll tell you what, not enough people are, it was, there was a, it was a well thought off, thought off, uh, thought about question, which is what gave us a topic to kind of dive down deep into tonight and i can tell you that um you know thinking okay number one most paid skill the 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 skill that will get you anything you want in life the skill that will fix you know all the problems in your life it's just thinking problem solving like thinking through things and so just the fact that you ask a question like that um <clears throat> And I don't, I don't have your name right here in front of me, so I don't want to butcher it either. But um, I'm telling you, like, that's a next level. You're already on the next level, whether you realize it or not. You're searching for the skill set to get better. And that's what it's about. Yeah. And as long as you continue to do that, you will, you will, who, it's unbelievable where you'll wind up in life. So I can't, um, it's something that I wish that I would have found when I was, you know, young, but I, I don't regret anything. It's just, I was just never exposed to this stuff before. So, um, um, just a asking the question is brilliant. So I just want to give kudos to you for just asking that question and to, uh, yeah, keep searching that, for that was a good your one. next skill. And, that was a good one. And we're supposed yeah. to end there, but you inspired me for one last thought that I just absolutely feel like we wouldn't be complete if we didn't include it. And that is, um, we all have egos and we all understand the injustices against us in our world 
And a lot of times that person is giving you such a hard time. You think they're a jerk. You think they're an idiot. You think they're whatever. But from their perspective, what they're upset about, if they're emotionally charged, is real. And so the ability to let go of our own ego and actually try to see it through their eyes will take you to another level. Think about it from your customer's perspective. Think about it, th them as a, another human being and how to make their life better. You take care of them. You don't have to worry about yourself. As long as you got your pricing right and everything else, they'll take care of you, right? Take yeah. care of your customer. Go find out what they want and serve them without sacrificing, you know, the things that the expertise that you bring to the table and you're going to find a lot of success. Got to let go of that ego. So that was sort of throw that on there, but uh, that is so important because no, I hear this it, all the yeah. time. People complaining, those customers, that idiot, that, that so-and-so over here. And it, it, it's really, we're just seeing the world one-sided. So absolutely. My thought. Okay, my brother. Well, great. Yeah, call. So keep learning, keep growing, keep building your skill set. Amen. Amen. Well said. Okay, yeah. Kelly, thank you again. And I look forward to our next call. You guys put some comments out there. Let us know what you want us to talk about and we'll absolutely throw it in the mix. Sound good. All right. Have a good one. Let's